as I said, organized groups within the Democrat Party, uh, such as Democrats against Agenda 21, that are um, standing in the way of these efforts as well. I want to bring to the attention of the committee, there are several publications that uh, we can make available to you through my office. I believe each of the committee members has been given a copy of this particular uh, pamphlet entitled Sustainable Development or Sustainable Freedom. So I'm not going to bore you by going through a lot of the information in here. I do have my copy marked up a bit, but I, I did want to just read to you uh, something found on page 8. And this is a quote from a, uh, a conference that happened in 1976. And this booklet will give you a lot of history in terms of where the idea of Agenda 21 first came from, how it has evolved over time. Um, but I do want to just bring to your attention uh, some information from the preamble of this 1976 report. It says, land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth and therefore contributes to social injustice. Public control of land use is therefore indispensable. Uh, one other thing that I'll bring your attention to is found on page 10. Uh, these, this is a list of recommendations that have come as a result of that 1976 committee. And I will mention that uh, you know aspects of Agenda 21 have been supported by both Republican and Democrat presidents. In my opinion, uh, they were both wrong in doing so. Um, President Clinton signed off on certain aspects of Agenda 21, as did the first President Bush. So once again, uh, we have bipartisanship in the error of Agenda 21. Uh, let me just read one of these recommendations. It reads like this. Excessive profits resulting from the increase in land value due to development and change in use are one of the principal causes of the concentration of wealth in private hands. Taxation should not be seen only as a source of revenue for the community, but also as a powerful tool to encourage development of desirable locations to exercise a controlling effect on the land market and to redistribute to the public at large the benefits of the unearned increase in land values. I think one of the things that you'll notice, uh, committee members, is that um, one of the goals of Agenda 21 is, is not so covertly, it's almost completely overt, and that is to control land and decrease the ability for people to have um, ownership over private land. So I'll be happy to try to answer any questions that the committee may have, but I do have a list of experts here that's going to come forward and uh, testify in a particular <coughs> order, and then there may be some others that wish to testify that I don't have on this list. Are there any questions for the sponsor? Um, at this time, since I see four of us in the room and there are seven on the committee, I believe, let's go ahead and take a roll. Yes, and while we take roll, if the first couple of witnesses will come up, take seats on either side of the bill sponsor, and we'll proceed. Chairman Nieves? Here. Vice Chairman Shaw? Here. Senators Leibla? Here. Romai? Sylvie? Here. Bozeman? Nasheed? Okay, a quorum has been established. And so now we are no longer in a subcommittee, we are in a full committee. And uh, are you first, sir? Why don't you go ahead and tell us your name, be sure to fill out a witness form, and I'm going to start the time here. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, and thank you, uh, Senator Cunillovitz, for sponsoring this legislation. Uh, I'm Ray Cunillo from Sullivan, Missouri. I'm a planning and zoning commissioner from Franklin County. And uh, I'm not going to go, it's uh, the UN Sustainable Development document is very extensive. Uh, I'm not going to get into any of that. I think the Senator did an excellent job of recapping the history of this, the timeline involved. It is certainly in the book that, that you have there. Uh, but I, I, I think my my recognition here, or my view of this bill, Senate Bill 265, is that it is to protect the sovereignty of the state of Missouri, the local economy of uh, local political subdivisions, uh, and to protect them from being enticed or coerced into accepting UN policy 
uh, goals uh, and implement land use policy goals at the local level. And some of the major mechanisms that are used to entice them is a federal grant funding program. Two that come to mind real quick, and you're going to hear testimony later on that will expand on that, but <clears throat> is the federal uh, uh, regional uh, planning grant funding program by HUD and EPA is one. The other mechanism that's used quite frequently is through the NGOs the relationship, meaning like the American Planning Association, ICLEI, and a host of others in addition to uh, consulting groups that, that uh, uh, promote this through the relationship with local government. Uh, so the, the federal grant funding is a major mechanism in accomplishing this. And, uh, and as well as, uh, as, well as the uh, non-governmental organizations. I think it's important though to clarify, and I want to quote something here. A lot of the proponents of Agenda 21 contend that there's no relationship to what's going on at the local level in these federal grant funding programs to the UN Agenda 21 uh, documents. But I will quote uh, here from the uh, 1998 Federal EPA Challenge Grant Program. I quote, the Sustainable Development Program is a step in implementing Agenda 21, the Global Plan of Action on the Sustainable Development signed by the United States at the Earth Rio, uh, Rio de Janeiro Summit. 1992. Finally, I will leave you with a quote from Al Gore, Vice President Al Gore in 1994 regarding sustainable development. Sustainable development will require a wrenching transformation of society. I thank you for your time and would uh, hope that you would pass this out of committee. Does anyone have questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you so much. And while you uh, begin your testimony, we'll let somebody else come up and take your seat. Why don't you proceed? Okay, thank you. I'm Darrell Stiles. I'm the Tax Commissioner of Dane County in the South Central Center. Okay. I'm Darrell Stiles, Presiding Commissioner of uh, Dade County in South Central Missouri. Just want to share with you a little bit that we have first we have witnessed firsthand um, how Agenda 21 is being uh, uh, pushed down on us. We witnessed this uh, actually in 2011. Uh, it was pretty obvious the uh, HUD, EPA, and actually the Federal Department of Transportation uh, uh, put out that they had millions of dollars available for sustainable development planning. The uh, State Association, the Missouri Association of Council of Governments, uh, which jumped on this, and all the regional planning associations across the state jumped on it. But it was, uh, it was a lot of dollars, and dollars are important. And it's, uh, it always uh, means something to them. So uh, we're a member of the Merrimack Regional Planning Commission. And uh, in that part, there's eight counties in that commission. And in the fall of 2011, they, uh, they managed to slip this by the board and get the, uh, the MRPC, that's our Regional Planning Commission, get, got that board's approval to proceed with this. Interestingly enough, the, uh, the members of that board had no idea afterwards that they had ever heard of it. They ever, they'd had no idea they ever discussed it or voted on it, but it was in the minutes that uh, the Regional Planning Commission had gotten the board's approval to pursue the, uh, this uh, project. Uh, it was going to be about $240,000 the Regional Planning Commission to put this program on. And so uh, I first heard about it in September and uh, done a little investigation just to see what this HUD grant program was. And it's pretty obvious what it was. I and my commission are very familiar with uh, the Agenda 21 program and the Sustainable Development Program with it. Uh, early, uh, about September 22nd, we got an email from the Regional Planning Commission. They wanted all of the uh, county commissions as well as the mayors within the Regional Planning Organization to sign a memorandum of agreement to form this uh, consortium to, uh, to push this program through. And uh, on September 26th, if you've been I'd just like to read a couple of paragraphs of the letter that our county commission sent to Bonnie Priggy, who was our MRP MRPC executive director of our planning commission. And we wrote, Dear Bonnie, the Dick County Commission this morning voted unanimously and without reservation 3-0 not to sign the memorandum agreement for the Sustainable Development Consortium as requested in the MRPC email dated 9-22-2011. This sustainable development program of HUD, DOT, and EPA is directly and irrefutably connected with the United Nations Agenda 21. Both Presidents Bill Clinton and most recently President Barack Obama have signed executive orders directing all agencies of the federal government to work with state and local community governments in a joint effort to, quote, reinvent government using the guidelines outlined in the United Nations Agenda 21. Tenants of Agenda 21 undermine private property rights, pose extreme environmental, social, economic, and educational policies to be implemented.
doing worldwide by national, state, and local governing bodies through the use of sustainable development planning programs and policies. The Dade County Commission is strongly opposed to the socialist anti-capitalist agenda of this UN program and is very disappointed our regional planning commission is willing to participate in it. The other, uh, the other commissioners across the region I'm sorry, I'm going to call time on you. That's fine. Just a few seconds. Okay. In the end, uh, they didn't get a single memorandum of agreement to participate in this program. So, uh, so it died at that point, but, but uh, Agenda 21 is still there. They'll bring it back. They'll just dress it up and uh, bring it back. Are there any questions for the speakers? I see none. Thank you so much. Would you like to begin and somebody else come up? Thank you. My name is Stacy Shore. I'm from Lake of the Ozarks. I've sold real estate for 18 years there. Um, I did not know what Agenda 21 was a year and a half ago, but in July of 2011, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission that actually licenses Ameren Spagnell Dam, uh, they blighted, they actually condemned 5,000 structures on the shores of our lake for removal. 1,500 of those structures were people's personal homes. At that time, if I may, the FERC order said these things. The Commission does not condone residential development and occupancy of project lands, since such residential use is inconsistent with the Commission's policy. Uh, second thing, in the majority of cases, the existing non-conforming structures or encroachments should be removed in a timely manner and the sites restored to pre-existing conditions. And this is probably the most concerning. The Commission does not allow the interest of private property owners to override the public's use and enjoyment of project lands. At that time that this issue became that got national attention, I became overwhelmed with calls from people from the West, Utah, um, Oregon, Washington State, saying this is Agenda 21. And that's what compelled me and several others to start looking into this issue. In cross-referencing that, understand this, then the state of Virginia, the state of Washington, the state of Oklahoma simultaneously Agenda, to, uh, sorry, FERC, by way of the Clean Water Act, that, that gives them the environmental jurisdiction to govern our shorelines. They also condemn properties on those as well. But if I may, out of Agenda 21, Chapter 37.4, it says it very much overlaps with the FERC order read for us. Public ownership or effective control of land in the private interest is the single most important means of achieving a more equitable distribution of the benefits of development while assuring the environmental impacts are considered. B, land is a sacred resource whose management should be subject to public surveillance or control in the interest of the nation. And D, governments may, must maintain full jurisdiction and exercise complete sovereignty over such land with a view to freely plan and develop human settlements. The issue is the project lands we're speaking of, people held those with deeds that were very explicit we had explicit, we still have explicit deed rights. Those properties, by definition, the, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has come in and redefined what our deeds actually mean to us. So unfortunately, what we're dealing with now is a blighted situation where these homes can't get title insurance, even though the issue is in some measure addressed when the United Nations or the FERC can come in by way of policy and redefine what our deeds rights actually, deed rights say surveyors, assessors, appraisers, realtors, title companies. There's a whole new layer of liability that we all face. So I just implore you to please understand the depth and gravity of this issue for all the people at Lake of the Ozarks, but the whole state of Missouri. Please help us maintain our sovereignty. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for this witness? Okay, seeing none. Yes. Good afternoon. Um, my presence today um, came about from reading my son's science high school textbook this past fall. And in that book, I read that you and I are a threat to the planet. And we can't be trusted to do right by the planet, not only as individuals, but as nations. And the UN has an answer to solve that dilemma, and that is Agenda 21, Agenda for the 21st Century. And though Agenda 21 is a global action plan, it is being implemented at a local level through sustainability action, sustainability development projects, and an international non-government organization known as ICLE, International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. It's also known as Local Governments for Sustainability. They actually wrote Chapter 28, 
of Agenda 21, and they have popularized the slogan, Think Global, Act Local. Um, once a city or county becomes uh, involved with ICLEI, they are put on a five-step milestone program. The first milestone is to um, do a sustainability inventory. And what that involves is doing a greenhouse gas inventory where all city and county utility use, gas and electric is inventoried. All modes of transportation, air, land, water, which includes BMT and fuel use is inventory. And all this information is shared with ICLEI and entered into their clean air and climate protection software. The third milestone is developing a local action plan. They're usually called um, climate action plans or sustainability action plans. Here's Lee Summits. The underlying premise is to achieve greenhouse gas mitigation, but in truth, these plans use the environment as a tool, and that's very important, to transform local governments, restrict personal choice and individual rights, increase regulation and sustainability mandates, and erode personal property rights. You can actually go on the ICWI website and see if your city is a member. Um, but don't wipe the sweat from your brow if you don't see your city on the list. They are also sponsors of climate for protection, climate, cities for climate protection campaign. That participation list is much longer. And please, if you go to their website, make note of how many member participants they have in China and Russia. Okay. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for this witness? Okay, Senator Lightline. Uh, where does your son go to school? Um, he goes to Sim Summit Christian Academy in, in Lee Summit, Missouri. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Good afternoon. My name is Todd Isaac Skelton. I'm a, uh, the chair of the Missourians Against Agenda 21. <coughs> and um, the senator took a, did take a little bit of my thunder uh, from, uh, uh, from what uh, the conference that he spoke of. And I believe that when you talk about Agenda 21, a lot of times, it just, uh, well, I apologize. This be next one. Okay. Um, a lot of times, Agenda 21, it sounds like a conspiracy theory or something of this nature. Um, you know, it's, it's not a conspiracy. It really is right out there in the open. You talk about it in the United Nations. Uh, I just wanted to real quick read a couple of quotes from the people that came up with this stuff uh, to give you some sort of an idea of how they're thinking. Um, from that other conference, they were saying that recognizing the circumstances of life for vast numbers of people and human settlements are unacceptable. Uh, those conditions are likely to, to be further aggravated as a result of rule backwardness, which compels a large majority of mankind to live at the lowest standards of living and contribute to uncontrolled urban growth. Uh, I don't know if they're talking about Missouri Ozarks or not for sure, uh, but uh, rule backwardness is evidently a problem. Sustainable development, this is from the Brundtland Commission, this is where sustainable development came from, from Grow Harlem, Brundtland. Uh, sustainable development has been described here in general terms. How are individuals in the real world to be persuaded or made to act in common interest? The answer lies partly in education, institutional development, and law enforcement. Um, from the uh, President's Council of Sustainable Development. Um, population must be stabilized at a level consistent with the capacity of the earth to support its inhabitants. How do they intend on implementing population control? I don't know, but it's in there. Um, Agenda 21 proposes, uh, this is exactly from Agenda 21, uh, or from uh, uh, the Earth Summit Strategy to Save Our Planet, Earth Press 1993. Agenda 21 proposes an array of actions which are intended to be implemented by every person on earth. It calls for specific changes in the activities of all people. Effective execution of Agenda 21 will require a profound reorientation of all humans unlike anything the world has ever experienced. Uh, also from uh, the report of the President's Council on Sustainable Development, private land use decisions are often driven by strong economic incentives that result in several ecological and aesthetic consequences. The key to overcoming it is through public policy. And I could go on a lot more. Here's an interesting one from uh, MoDAS. You could, except I can't. Right, so I, I, I was going to put it anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We're, everybody's taking a little bit longer than the allotted time, so I'm going to reduce the amount of time available right now to two minutes per um, speaker. So please proceed. 
Good afternoon. My name is Mark Carter, and I am uh, an alderman for the city of Baldwin, Missouri, and I'm also a real estate broker in St. Louis County. I'm here today to testify in favor of Bill 265, and what I would like to talk about is how Agenda 22, or Agenda 21, that's the next generation, Agenda 22, uh, Agenda 21 affects local government and the urban planning arena. We have had over two, 20 years of Agenda 21 uh, being forced down our throats at all different levels of government and business in our community. <coughs> Almost everything you touch today has some sub sustainability issue tied to it, from trash to water to land to air to zoning to construction, planning, etc. We have a generation of urban planners who know no different than the programs of Agenda 21 and the tentacles of this program. It is ingrained in every convention uh, that these people go to, publication, meeting, long-term plan, sustainable growth plans, etc. Specifically, I ran into this issue head-on as a member of our board when the Baldwin uh, board was kind of haphazardly wanted to uh, adopt the uh, 2012 building code, the National Building Code, and we said, uh, our planner said, oh, this is no big deal. Just take it on, and that way we can be uh, a green city or whatever we want to be that, that day. Um, and so we took it on. And then later found out from the HBA, Home Builders Association of St. Louis, that if we were to implement that uh, building code, it would cost the homeowner $60,000 extra to build a home in Baldwin than anywhere else in the city. Uh, we did, went into great debate, went into great depth, and found out that a lot of the issues that were covered in this uh, building code, the 2012 building code, has a lot of the Agenda 21 uh, issues in it, and these costs will be passed on to consumers. Thank you. So, thank you very much. We need to keep uh, moving so that everybody has time to speak. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for this? Thank you. Please proceed. Hi, yes, thank and, you very And also, much. with everybody who has uh, testified and who will, please fill out a witness form and make sure you get certain <coughs> It's very important. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Sandra Davidson, and I'm here to uh, uh, speak in support of Senate Bill 265. And we do have a 247 written witnesses that were sent in to us that we have brought to the meeting here to present. And I might mention to you, well, how do... Uh, a couple of the questions may be, well, how do we know that this is Agenda 21 related? Or how do we know that this is, how do we how do we know uh, that this is not something that perhaps this, the uh, community itself has not just thought of of its own? First of all, uh, the old saying goes, look who he's associated with or look who they're associated with. And therefore, you know, you know a man's character by those who he associates with. Um, getting this before the communities, if you look around the communities across the nation, they are almost identical in the way they are set up. They're all striving for the same goals. There's no way that a group of citizens, you get like these citizens in this room, there is no way we're going to agree on the same thing, and let alone if it means that we're going to relinquish any of our private property rights or our citizens' rights as a, a citizen of the United States. There's no way we would do that especially if it's going to say that the uh, government is in control or the United Nations is going to be coming in to dictate to us this. So therefore, that is one thing. Knowing the, uh, who brought it to who brought it to their attention, the visionary, the planners, and the funding that goes with that. And who's in bed with who? HUD, EPA, Department of Energy, Department of Conversation, Con Conversation, yeah, <laughs> conservation, and then and, and then get this Enron. Anybody remember Enron? How about Amoco? How about uh, uh, the the Amron Electric Company? Some of these these are in bed. These are what you find call private governor uh, partnerships with the with the private sector. Somebody's picking winners and losers, and it's not us. So the last thing I want to do is give up my private right or give up my property. I don't want you to do it for me, and I don't want to do it for you. We don't want to become a communitarium. We want to become individuals as we've always been. And I thank you so much. I, please, I beg you to, to pass this bill. Thank you. Any questions for this witness? Tina, thank you. I'll be sure to fill out a witness form. Please proceed. My name is Jane Boyce. I live in Morgan County in District 58. 
Um, Cameron and Burke, uh, there has been a problem with the lake. Uh, the lake is unique in that it is privately owned. It never was a Corps of Engineers project. Yet, Amron asked for permission to take possession of so many feet around the lake called a project boundary up to the 662. They say that they had documents proving this, and yet they needed FERC's permission to own it. The federal government does not own, nor did it ever own, any of the lands down there. And 30% of that lake was never owned by Union Electric to begin with. I'm on one of those tracks. For FERC to give permission to Amron to take seven feet off of my front yard is unconstitutional. They don't even have a document, I do, that says that I own that property. I have a document that clearly states that I own down to the 660 and that I pay taxes on that 660. And yet FERC stepped in and said they could take up to the 662. On my lot, it's seven feet. If your lot is relatively level, you could give up to three and four acres of your property. FERC never owned any of that property. The federal government never owned any of that property to give it to a private uh, for-profit corporation. I'd also like to uh, submit my witness of, uh, appearance and a testimonial from um, Doreen Hayes, who was involved in the Heritage Area Project south of uh, I-44. Thirteen counties it involved. Um, these are the kind of things that are happening here in Missouri, and I ask you to please pass SB 265 and make this a law. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions for this one? Seeing none. I am Mitch Hubbard, and I am the president of the Callaway Property Rights Coalition, and I simply want to state our support for this legislation. Awesome. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Phil Todd, and I'm a citizen of the uh, 10th Senate District, and uh, as a private property owner and uh, third generation owner of a uh, farm in North Missouri, one of the things that I'm concerned about is the issue of central planning, where people use my property and my money for their own schemes that don't fit my needs. And I'm very concerned about Agenda 21 because that's what it amounts to. They're taking other people's money, using other people's property, and coming up with, uh, with plans of uh, what they call sustainability, saying that that farm is unsustainable because agriculture is unsustainable, it says that the transportation to that farm is unsustainable, it says that the tractors that are operated on that farm have to have higher fuel standards uh, uh, because that's unsustainable. And the list just keeps going on and on. Uh, Agenda 21 is a worldwide plan and I'd like to know who the people are that are on the top that have that, that think that they're going to control all this at the end because it's certainly relinquishing control of our own private property and our own destiny. It's unconstitutional. You know, private property is a, is a fundamental foundation, the cornerstone of our, of, of our natural rights. And I urge you to consider and pass this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for this? Um, any questions for this? And how many more people are there to testify uh, for this bill? Okay, I guess you're the last one. <coughs> uh, yes, and I uh, suspect I'll be repeating uh, some of the things that have already been said. So to avoid doing that, I'll just be very, very brief. And I'll tell you, my name is Don Griffin. Uh, I'm with the Campaign for Liberty in St. Louis, Missouri, along with being on the Board of Directors of the John Burke Society. We've been fighting this thing. And it is not just the uh, Agenda 21 that are entry into the United Nations back in 1945. So if I could make a step forward and suggest that not only should we be concerned with today's Agenda 21, but once we defeat it, and I'm sure we will witness the absence of any opponents to this thing right here, but coming along behind this Agenda 21 certainly will be an Agenda 22, 24, 25, all of which will be sponsored out of the United Nations, but with a slightly different twist. So uh, many of us, particularly in the John Burke Society, who've been fighting at uh, UN for many, many years, have recommended that we take a, uh, not a new tack, but to 
develop with intensity the efforts to get us out of the United Nations and out of NATO and stop its funding. And the best way to achieve that is going through the House of Representatives of the United States, the only party that could raise funds for uh, establishing money for anything. And a recent bill was introduced by a courageous congressman in Georgia where he was recommending that we cease any more funds be devoted to uh, the abilities of the United Nations. Thus, the United Nations would disappear, thank God. So my recommendation, along with others, is as proud as I am of this defeat, looks obvious, of this 265, which I fully support, is that some courageous congressman, senator, come along and say, in addition to that, we give our Congress their constitutional authority to defund anything to do with the United Nations. Otherwise, we'll have 25, 26, 30 more unconstitutional wars sponsored by NATO and the United Nations get us out of the place. It's a trap. Thank, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Questions for this witness? Seeing none, I guess we do have one more witness here. Last one. Mr. Chairman, members of the Betty on Janet Engelbach with Missouri Eagle Forum. Here are the, the 247 witness forms that Mrs. Davison uh, said something about before. I just want to say that uh, this is so important and there's such a flurry right now of sustainable education, sustainable agriculture, sustainable everything. But I do have some, just in my county alone, sustainable communities, and, and I have this. And also the University of Missouri uh, at our local annual extension uh, council awards dinner, we have a, um, a PhD assistant professor from the Department of Rural Sociology and advisory chair, and she is going to speak on sustainable agriculture uh, within the University of Missouri. And as farmers, my husband and I uh, have felt uh, this through all of the all of the departments and. Sustainable will change, I agree with someone, and I thank you for this yeah. uh, hearing. Thank you so much. Um, I guess we have another one here. One more, Chairman. Okay, please proceed, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, uh, for the record, Jim Lemke testifying as a citizen. Uh, today, and uh, you've heard uh, plenty of good testimony from uh, many Missourians uh, before me. So, 